What's up guys, Kenan from the KRVR. Happy Thursday, and today we're going to be looking at one of my most prized Ferrari models. The keenest of viewers will know I'm an avid collector of Ferrari models. <clears throat> I happen to love collecting them. I don't know why. I, maybe it's just because I can't afford to buy the real thing yet, but I really love collecting them. I tend to spend a lot of time looking around, seeing what I like, and amongst the train set hobby that I have, this is way up there. So today we're going to be looking at my Ferrari 500 Formula 2 De Double Weltmeister by CMC. And you're probably thinking Ferrari, that's Italian, De Double Weltmeister, that's German. Well, this car uh, from 1953 won the world championship uh, two, for two years running. So Double Weltmeister means double world uh, master. So there you go. When you pick this car up from wherever you choose to buy it from, this is what you get. This nice box has some of their other models running along the bottom there. No other Ferraris are actually shown on the box, but such is life. Also on the bottom here, just some uh, stuff in German and English. Uh, in the directions on all the papers, the German will come first and then the English. But there it just has the Ferrari seal of approval, I guess you could say, on the bottom. So, you open this up. I have some papers from the guy I bought it from in Australia. That's where it comes from. He did a great job. It got here, you know, pretty fast for coming from Australia. It was very nice. There's a little tag that comes with it. These are all very limited production models. CMC is a renowned model builder. It stands for Classic Motor Cars. And they do a really, really great job. So, there's some of the stuff that comes with that. And you have some more papers here. I know what you're thinking. This is probably like, oh, this is kind of like a watch. Yeah, a lot of paperwork involved. There's a bunch of stuff that goes with the car. The car is, you can fully dismantle the car on your own if you want. But I don't recommend it. There are certain things you can do on your own, but I wouldn't recommend taking lots of parts off the car. So, when you take it out of the box... On the top here, just a bunch of papers, just important information, as you can see, like I guess that's German first, and then English. So, very good. It comes in this very protective styrofoam box, and once you open this up, there she is. Oh, this is a gorgeous car, and I'll explain to you in a minute what's so special about it. Uh, you get this with it. There's just some little tweezers for opening very, very small parts on this car. And now I'm going to relocate and getting closer to the car so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so out of the box, this is what you get. The beautiful 500 Formula 2. So you start looking at this car, you pick it up. It's got a pretty good weight to it. That's because it is mostly metal construction. Very, very well done. Of course, you know, Germans. They always do everything so very well whenever they're engineering anything. Even on this scale, they always do something in a beautiful, beautiful fashion. Really, really nice interior. The seat is even made of corduroy. I mean, it is def it's a cloth seat. It's just unbelievable. The detail they put into this, such a small thing. But they do a great job. Looking at the interior, you know, very, very important bit of the car, where a lot of detail is done in such a very small space. You see, looking down here, you can see over here is the gear shifter. You can see the two supports on either side of the seat. Looking down there, if you look very closely, you can see the pedals on both sides of the car. On the instrument panel, you can see everything you need to look at. Very, very clearly stated. The three-spoke traditional Ferrari steering wheel is actually done in wood and metal. Very, very nice display there. Looks pretty good, too. I mean, even for a scale model, very, very sharp, very, very accurate. Having seen the car in person, it is very true to life. Looking at other parts of the car, if you take a look here at one of my personal favorites. It's a little hard to open. I'll try it with my finger. There we go. The gas cap. It does actually open. It's actually hollow inside as well. 
So you can see all the little detail that was put in there, all the little rivets on top are just unbelievable. There's another one down here, I think this is the reserve tank. You open that up, same thing. Whole bunch of rivets on the inside. If you're brave enough, you can actually remove these screws here with the screwdriver that is included. I didn't show it because I keep it elsewhere, but you can take this off and you can actually see the stainless steel drum that they used. So when you're driving this car, I mean, not only did you have to be brave to drive it quickly, but you also had to be brave because what you're sitting on is the gas tank. So if anything goes on, goes wrong, you're in pretty big trouble. So it is an open cockpit car, which which is very traditional for the time. When you think of race cars now, they're completely different. Uh, Americans, in particular, like me, we might think of NASCAR when we think of race cars. But back then, you know, 60 years ago, this is what you thought of as a race car. They looked like this. And it's just, by comparison, they're drop-dead gorgeous. I absolutely adore this period of racing, even into the 60s. Like my favorite Ferrari, the 250 GTO. You don't see design like that anymore. The craftsmanship of the actual car, you don't see that either. Speaking of craftsmanship, if you look at these Barani spoked wire wheels here, you can actually take bits off at the end, which is a little tedious to do when you're wearing gloves. But there it is. You can take the wheel off to get a better look at those very nice drum brakes. Ferrari was very hesitant in making disc brakes. He preferred the drum brakes, but then again, he was hesitant in everything. As you can tell, this is a front-mounted engine. Ferrari was not keen to rear-mounted engines. He didn't like the idea of having the engine behind the driver. He said the horse always pulls the cart, never pushes it. So he preferred having the engines in the front. But you just look at the amazing construction here inside the wheel. You can see the brakes very, very well. And yeah, the wheels do turn. So that looks pretty good. There. Looking at the tire, another important detail, and sometimes a missed one you can see on the edge there. You can actually see that there's a name on there, an actual branding on the tire. That's something I don't have in a lot of my model cars. This is kind of something I regret, but there it is. All the rivets on this car are beautiful. They're all true to life, as true as it can get. It's absolutely wonderful. In a minute here, I'm going to open up this engine, take off all these little clips, which are actually spring-tensioned, and we're going to take a look at that glorious V4. Oops. Okay, I've done all of the clips on the side of, both sides of the car, and yes, those are actually spring-tensioned clips. Amazing. So, take off the engine cover here, which I haven't done in some time, so There it is. Absolutely unbelievable. As you can see, you have the twin choke, double wherever carburetors on the side. Very similar to what you see in some of the Ferraris from the you know, 53 on, really. You see those in the 250 GTO. Hopefully, I'll do a review of that as well. As you can see, just the amazing intention to detail. All the little Plugs are run individually with this wire. Indeed, you can in, you can move it around, so it's not completely fixed. Uh, very very nice. And when I say fixed, I mean still. I don't mean like it was broken and I had it sent away. That's not what I mean at all. But I mean the amazing detail. It, it, it's just it's indescribable. You can see Ferrari written on the rocker boxes. Just amazing. When you turn the steering wheel. You can see right here, you can see how it moves the wheels. Very, very nice. And of course, for each cylinder, you have uh, the tailpipe that comes out. Which, it's, it's just unbelievable. The amount of time it took to make something like this. It's just unparalleled in quality. That's why I love CMC so much. Some guy in Germany put this together himself, you know, I mean, just spent so much time. I'm sure, you know, a lot of mistakes, and they had to go back and do it over and over and over. 
but it's perfect. I mean, you can make it's very easy to make a lot of mistakes with these tiny parts. So the way they've done this is just unbelievable. So from the other side, so you get a better idea. Amazing construction in this car. And in the front, you can better see those uh, huge drum brakes there. When this car was constructed, it was actually made with 1,463 parts, 1,150 of which are actually made of metal. That's just unbelievable. This car was actually, it's just unbelievable. It was originally driven, I know, by Alberto Ascari, who's a very, very famous racing driver. And uh, this car is... He's what actually made this car famous, but made it a double world champion. Really, really great car. Just some facts about it for anybody who's really interested in cars. It is a four-cylinder inline engine, displacement of 1,985 ccms. Total power output is 185 horsepower at 7,500 rpm. And when you consider, you know, that's not necessarily a lot of horsepower, but when you're in a car that weighs less than Lotus Elise, that thing will move. It is a very... It's a quick car, in fact, its top speed is 265 kilometers per hour. I'm not sure exactly what that is in miles per hour, but it's it's a pretty quick car. You know, I mean, obviously, the 50s were, when you think of the 50s in car design, you think of those big pink Cadillacs and whatever, but over in Europe, this is what Ferrari was doing. They were trying to expand from Formula 1, and they were doing Formula 2 stuff as well, and their grand pre-market pre -market was very strong. The 250 Testarossa still didn't exist. I mean, it was a very interesting time for Ferrari. You know, that was really where they had to start making their name. They had to become a very independent company because in 1947, Ferrari produced the 125S. And when you consider this is only six years later and they're building cars like this and expanding to such a great market, it's really unbelievable. And when CMC chose this car to reproduce, you know, I'm sure they've definitely had to look at all that history and just think this is an amazing car. The underbody of this car is another thing that amazed me. I know I've shown it, uh, but it's just its just unbelievable. The amount of time that someone put into making this car is great. And that's why it warrants such a high price tag. Yeah, this is pretty expensive. You can pick them up on eBay, where actually I do all of my automotive shopping for the, mini the miniatures anyway. Uh, you can pick these up at lowest $240. So, it's not cheap, but this is one of the cheaper... CMC cars. They're 156 Shark Nose. It was kind of cheap as well, by CMC standards anyway, but it's, um, you don't get this, this kind of amazement. I, I just, when I first got this car and I held it for the first time, I was just blown away. And it still remains to this day one of my favorite models. I'd, I'd, I'd be trying to even say it's my favorite model. Absolutely an amazing car. If you are a model collector, you like 118th scale stuff, I recommend picking one of these up. An absolute must for any car collector. Even if you're not into Ferrari, this is a must for your collection. Well, that's it from me at the KRVR. Please make sure to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.